Hello everyone, and welcome to our setup tutorial and feature showcase. Let's get started. As a side note before we start, the only way for you to purchase Isis Ultra is from the official website at isisultra.com. If anyone is asking you for money outside of the website, you are most likely being scammed. After your purchase is complete, you will receive an email with your activation code. That email will also contain a download button from where you can download ESIS Ultra. Once your download is complete, open the setup file. Again, make sure you are using the installer that was sent to you via the official email address. Anything else could contain malware. The setup is fully automatic and contains all necessary runtimes. The only thing you have to do is click install. Once the setup is complete, an activation window will pop up. Here you must enter the email you made your purchase with, and your activation code. Once you've entered your information, click activate. If the activation was successful, you will see a successfully activated message box. Click confirm and the application will restart. Once it restarts, the application will be fully activated. From here let's go over the settings real quick. First the settings are split into two, we have our main and global settings. The main settings are per ESIS installation, while global settings apply to all ESIS installations. In the global settings tab we can change the full backup path, you just double click and select the new folder location. Now let's go ahead and add ESIS, we click the plus sign, and then we select the ESIS folder that we want to add. Each ESIS added has its own settings. This way we can have multiple ESIS versions that use different settings. Keep in mind that it's recommended to run ESIS with 2GB of RAM if your machine has enough memory. I will set one of them to use the new dark mode feature, just so you guys can see it, but I'll continue the tutorial with the normal theme. Once you're done customizing, you can also create shortcuts for each ESIS that you have added, which will use the settings that you have set for it. Click Launch, or use the shortcut that you have created. Keep in mind licenses are progressive, meaning, your license will need to be re-authenticated periodically, each re-authentication will increase the time until your next one, so you will need to re-authenticate less and less until your license reaches a fully permanent state. Dark Mode really gives ESIS a more modern look, and makes it more easy on the eyes. Alright, let's go through the new features. First, navigation. Now you can navigate ESIS similarly to a browser, meaning when you use your mouse backwards button, you will be taken a module back, and using the forward button will take you a module forward. Additionally, clicking the scroll wheel will now open the open file dialog for the current module that you are in. Next to the connection button we can now see a new feature, this new feature is full backup. What it does is it makes a full backup of the car you are currently connected to, Additionally, the connection dialog now shows all of the series. Next, let's go to the FA editor. Here we can use the new feature to open an FA. Click your scroll wheel to open the file dialog and choose the FA which you would like to open. All FAs load very quickly usually around 50 milliseconds. Opening multiple FA files that belong to the same series will result in them loading instantly. One of the main objectives of this project was speed, so you will notice that everything loads significantly faster than what you would see on other older solutions. Now, let's go over the FA helper. The table on the left contains all the codes you currently have, and the table on the right provides you with all available codes. Codes that are already applied to your FA are marked with a gray background. Double left clicking a code will add it to your FA, and double right clicking it will remove it. You can also remove applied codes with a double left click or the delete key on your keyboard. At the bottom we can also change the types of codes, or change the language. Clicking apply will add all the codes to the current FA.
Next, let's go to the FDL editor. Here we can see a new but familiar layout, let's go over some of the new features. We can disable the disclaimer that gets shown every time we apply a code, we can turn on select on apply which will automatically expand all the functions that get modified when applying a code, and last we have auto fetch that will automatically load cheat sheets for each NCD that you open. Keep in mind old cheat sheets are compatible, but they first need to be converted. That can be done by sending your cheats to our support email. ESIS Ultra also comes with some of the most popular ones already converted and installed. Clicking reload will always load cheats from your disk, you don't need to restart ESIS Ultra to see changes made to your cheats. As a side note, you can double right click a code, to have all of its functions expanded without modifying the NCD, so you can review them better before they are applied. Now let's go to the cheat sheet maker, first we need to enter our author name, the new cheat is saved with the name of the author. Then we have two modes to choose from, overwrite will either create a new cheat sheet or overwrite an existing one, and append will add the new codes to an existing cheat that has the same name as the author name. While keeping the maker window open, we go to our NCD. Then we right click the header, we will see a new option, add header. We click it and the header will be added to our maker window. Then, we can right click the newly added header, and click add code, we can change the name as this will be the name of our code. Next, we make sure to have our new code selected, and we go back to our NCD, we find the function that we want to add, we go to its value, we right click and select add function. We can choose between the drop down value, or the byte value. We can have multiple functions added to a code, and we can also have multiple codes, we can even change the NCD in the same instance, and add a new header, all without closing the maker window. That way everything will be saved to a single cheat sheet. Now, let's review the cheat sheet we just exported. Finally, we have the SVT construction preview, it can be found in the tall calculating module or in the coding module. We need to have an active connection to a car, or a fake connection to the non-existing gateway. Next we simply read or load an FA. Then we choose the I-step shipment for which we want to generate the SVT for. The generated SVT will be shown in the SVT panel on the left, it will be almost the same, or exactly the same as the one from the production plan for that I-step. If you are using a high resolution monitor, this is how you apply the high DPI fix. Go to the file location of ESIS Ultra. Then right click the executable, go to properties. Then compatibility. Click on change high DPI settings. Then tick override high DPI scaling and make sure it's set to application. Then you can click apply. And that concludes our tutorial and showcase of ESIS Ultra. More features and improvements are on their way through updates. Be sure to subscribe as we will continue to upload more videos and additionally coding tutorials. If you have any questions or feature requests, feel free to send us an email or contact us on any of our social media accounts. All purchases are dispatched immediately after your payment is confirmed, if you haven't received an email in the span of 15 minutes after your purchase and you have checked your spam folder, feel free to contact us. Thank you for your time, and goodbye.